still telling you my journey, my upsconing, my travel ban journey in the UK that caused me a lot of consequences. So for the two months, it was a little, for the first two months, the first month was like, I need to hide inside the house. I need not to put my face out because I know they were still looking for me at that time. And the Boloto tried to put her on to try to see people that can get me even police was notified because they didn't want me to stay in the UK as part of the agreement. And I was not supposed to stay without uh, uh, the real papers to back me up. So the second month was already okay. I tried to move out, try once in a while, once in a while, you know. This is so funny. It is a story that I don't want you to go into trouble in one way or the other. This is the neighborhood. We lived in a neighborhood. So it was one time more left me. You know, the way these people try to construct the house is that from one window, you can see someone from the next window. You can even talk to the next person in the next window. You can say, hey, hello, hi, a good morning which is something very good for the neighborhood. Because when you need help, the screaming comes a little bit very, very easy. I'm in Newcastle and I'm enjoying the little bit of Newcastle. I enjoy it partially. This is the beautiful girl I get to see. It's a story, it's not drama. I get to see this girl in the mall in the mall. In the other opposite villa, a building, apartments, and I was like, I looked at her for the first time. Because the window was next to my bedroom where I was sleeping. I looked at her. She was a very beautiful girl. She was called Maren. I looked at her in the window for the first time. I got scared. I was like, what is my high thing? I was like, ah, oh, man, I better go for this. <laughs> it was something that, I was like, I better go for this. I better try out this. I think she likes me. This first time, I, I gave a signal. The second time, I was like, hi. Say hi. I think her parents were not in the house at that time. The second time I was like, my name is Max. And you? She said, I'm Marin. She's like, hi. You look beautiful this morning. She's like, oh really? That is how go the conversation starts. So as one time I targeted her, she was getting out to do the dog walking. I also moved out. That is where the story started from. I started talking to her like this, I like this, we tried to move. Okay, we moved for almost one, like around two weeks. No? I mean the third month. What we call overstay. Having grain from Birmingham to Newcastle. I didn't know sparingly that even in these countries, even the neighbor gets concerned of what is happening to the next girl. So, this is a neighbor that he noticed someone new in the area moving around with a girl and they didn't know. They definitely maybe thought we are coming from the same uh, house, and which was not. I was coming from the other opposite house. Okay. So, for the first two days, it was okay. She came out with a dog. We moved and we enjoyed. We would talk and hop out with a dog. You know, that kind of care. You know it for the first time when it gets up. It's quite amazing, right? The third time, things didn't go right. She didn't go well. The gentleman who saw me with the girl reported to the father. Right? So one time I was in the window. I was like, hey, it's okay today. We go out for the dog. I, 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 I need to tell you something. This is the time I wanted to tell her I love you. I, I just, I, it's like, it's the only breach of the time that I, I, I plan to tell her actively that I'm interested in you. But little did I know in my mind that this is going to be the start of the trouble for me. Alright? And they're like, yes. Say, really? It's okay, it's fine. I'll be coming out this time. So it is the same time the dad was coming back from work. I didn't know. The dad phoned me in the car. I was like, who the hell are you? I tried to explain myself. I'm in a town and I'm living in a mall house. The next house. It's like, I don't know you. What the hell are you doing with my girl? I was like, she says my friend. The girl tried to back me out. Like, daddy, no. It's my friend. It's just leaving my friend. I thought it's something going to say. I said, it's going to end there from the start. I didn't know. He had already alerted police to hunt me down. Good enough for the next three days, I didn't go out. We are almost getting to the close of the third month. I didn't go out. 
I said, like, every time I wanted to talk to her, I'll just go to the window. Hey, who talks plainly on the window when the parents are off? And it will have the conversation. Because they're so close that the conversation will have it, I said. Okay? That is how very, very, very nasty and to good luck at that time. So one time, I didn't know what was happening. I think the father went to police and tried to tell them we have a stranger in our community, which we don't know, okay? And he's on our girl. He's actually trying to spoil the girl around. One time in the morning, it was on the 28th. 28th, remember? June. 2010, police came, they knocked on the door, well in the morning, it was around 9 or 10, just having breakfast, because Moore was not even in the house. Moore went back to Birmingham and left him in Newcastle, so every time he would come, he would ask me, what do I bring for him next? I need to bring for you here, because he wanted me to stay in the UK, okay? So he would bring me my shopping, give me my shopping in the house. So I'll say in the house, the hard calls, how it calls in the house, I'll do whatever, take off the cart and just be in the house, watch the movie, like anything else. Whenever you would come, I'll be I'll coming back here, I'll be coming today at this time and we'll get out, we shall move to 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 this other place, we shall go to the national park and you'll see all this. I try to move around, he tried to move on me around, I accept. Rest in peace, Maud. He passed away. That was so sad. Alright? So police came knocked up and they're like I opened the door, I didn't know all what it is, because I'm supposed to ask, who the hell is this? And so like, I just opened the door. They had a picture of me. They just put me on handcuff and pulled me hard, asked me a question, how long have you been living here? I said, I've been living here for the last three months. Okay. Okay. Can we have your documents? I tried to say no. My documents are lost. We, I'm trying to get off. Because by that time when police came, I definitely knew I was in trouble. I was in trouble and it was hell trouble. So I was trying to get off. You know, I was a little bit scared. I was a little bit scared now. I'm on handcuff. They said, no, you need to go home. We are taking you back to your country. I was like, why? No, 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 no. They took me to the immigration office. They took me to police. Immigration department, they asked me a lot of questions, they asked, they removed whatever it is, I told them this, I told them about the apprenticeship, I told them about the university, Birmingham University, I told them this, I told them, please don't take me home, I need to stay, don't take me home, I need to stay here, please I'll do whatever you have to do, if you have a job sweeping, if you have cleaning, I said all things at that time because I didn't want to go home. I'll do the cleaning, the uh, police here, I can do for free, no problem, I don't need money, Is that all I need is I need to stay here, I can take the asylum seeker, I can stay here. They said no. I didn't know the people that were living in the country, the agreement under that was supposed to go back. They cannot change the agreement. And the people I came with, they would already left that they have to take me back to the country because my parents would ask me. It's as if I told them my parents would ask for me, you know, or they would ask you where is my whereabouts. So it's like they're getting so much caring about me and that was that at the time. Right? Things didn't go on. Say, who you want me to call? It's like, you can call more. I gave them the numbers. Like, is, I know him. He's, he's, uh, he's my friend. We've been with him for quite a long period of time. I was like, no, he's not supposed to stay here. You cannot find for him. You will find for him to come back. I said, they put, took me to court. They took me to court. And the judication was like, I have to have a travel ban of 10 years. So imagine I had a travel ban of what you call 10 years. From 2010 to 2020. June 28. That is when it was supposed to be my end of travel ban. 